Hello YouTube, I Fix It All here, Team I Fix It All. So I'm on part two of this here, harmonic balancer and dampener repair. Uh, I confirmed with Pioneer that their, um, their Pioneer, who is one of several suppliers for aftermarket parts, and updated or explained to them what I found and they agreed the 351 Windsor is a 28 ounce imbalance. Uh, their website's wrong and that's kind of cascade effecting down to other suppliers. I even found this error all the way up to uh, Napa Auto Parts. Uh, Pioneer was um, calling out um, 50 ounce imbalance. Right here. And that would be for a 351. So what they're saying is a 1990 Ford Bronco, if you order DA3021, right here, it would be interchangeable with an 87 Ford Mustang or a 87 Ford Thunderbird, and that is wrong. So they referred me to Damper Dudes. I talked to Damper Dudes out of California. Right here is their phone number. Good team up there. Uh, they said the way they're repairing dampeners, dampers, harmonic balancers, whatever you want to call them, uh, they did agree that um, Pioneer's wrong. Uh, all the Windsors are 28 ounce, whether they're external or internal. Uh, there is no pre or post 1981 or 82 debate with them. Um, but they did agree that they're 28 ounce. And they said uh, in the state of California, they had to retool because they're not allowed to use rubber anymore. Um, they're, they're injecting the gap with two-part silicon and baking, baking the parts. What is this? They're selling a small block Ford for $2,500. We can supply custom build or crate engines prices according to build specs starting at $2,500. Huh? Well, that's interesting. I bet they have an oil pan I can have. Hmm. Because I need one. Uh, listen, um, back to our point. So... I failed on my first video because of the radiator hose, but I did talk to damper dudes. They seem to know everything technical about harmonic balancers and dampeners and whatever. And I told them I was getting a gap measurement around the, the inner hub to the outer inertia ring of 0 .100. And they confirmed, yep. And so they, they, they clock the inner hub to the outer ring and they inject, they set the the outer ring, the inertia ring on a jig. They set the hub on a jig, jig, and then they inject the perimeter with the two-part silicone, and when it starts to set up, then they bake it. So that's what you're getting. They had never considered using a uh, recycle, recycling parts for pressing because that's the way they used to do it until the uh, global warming came down on them real hard and tire companies left California and Everyone else knows the rest of the story. We're here today. So I took, I've been working on this just as a can I fix it kind of project. And here's what I've come up with. This may be an excessively boring topic for some, but interesting to others. But this is a, um, this is information that would carry over to most all two-part harmonic balancers. Um, and I say that tongue in cheek because I can say, well, with Ford 302 or 351 small block, um, what I'm trying to uh, show here is this is the inertia ring from here to here. There's a dotted line around that's occupying the area dedicated to the inertia ring. Then this area in here is the air gap, which I'm pointing out over here. I'm calling it 0 0.100 gap. 0 0.100 inches gap and then I have an illustration of my inner hub labeled as the hub four bolt hub and um, so this gap is what I'm focusing on 
Um, the radiator hose that I used measured 0 0.180 inches, which means that when that was wrapped around the circumference, I was compressing it down probably at or about 45% of its natural thickness. And since it was cloth, cloth, cloth reinforced, it was ripping right in between those fibers, those nylon fibers. And then I discovered heater hose is 0 0.140 inches thick, which means if I use heater hose, I'm compressing it 28% thinner than it's naturally aspired to be. So with that in mind, I'm going to go with heater hose. Um, had a pretty decent technical discussion with Damper Dudes and as well as Pioneer. Um, but Damper Dudes had never considered using recycled parts to do the press fit they used to do. They would repress on rubber and then the government came down on them because rubber is a health hazard. So now they're using materials that are probably more of a health hazard. Um, let's just move on. Um, so DA3021 is not a proper 351 Windsor harmonic balancer. And the rubber part number is 701556. Talk to Ford. The number does exist. However, they, my dealership said after they called me back, they don't understand why they even have such a number because there are no, there's no evidence that it was ever stocked anywhere. But yeah, we found the number. So it's, it's almost like archaeology. Let's press right in here some heater hose material, which will be 0 0.140 inches thick. And of course, step one is I got to get set up in this here stand and get you focused on that block. I'll get my rubber, which I've already pre-slit long ways, get it dressed in here. Hang tight while I get you set up. Okay, so like I mentioned before, get some uh, yeah I need a broom here I'm gonna dress this in to the ring folding it backwards and um, before I go further the previous video I was pressing this together um, incorrectly if you pay attention, which I did notice this before, but I was ignoring what I noticed. And most of the time, I discover that when I ignore some small detail that I notice, it comes back to bite me later. I was pressing in this direction. And in this direction, we were talking about how I trimmed off these bosses here a little bit to make the, uh, the fit test to where it doesn't rip the rubber. This is a sharp edge right here, and the receiving part is sharp edge. But if you go 180 over, what you notice is... Uh, let me see if I can re 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 rewind here. What I notice is on this side, it's rounded, and on this side of the hub, it's rounded as though... The intent here is to press in this direction. I was pressing... Uh, I was pressing this way when, in fact, the, uh, the design tells me I sh since this top edge here is rounded and this bottom edge here is rounded, I need to be pressing the ring on the hub and not pressing the hub down into the ring. That's a sharp edge. This is a sharp edge. And that'll shave your parts, your material. But if I press this away, ring down over the hub, that's rounded and this side is rounded. 
So I'm going to try to do some correction on how I press this on as well. But let me get my rubber staged up and woven on here. I've got some timing marks. That's a zero and that's 10 degrees. I'll fold the rubber hose backwards. I'm going to actually try to target having my rubber gap right at zero as well, just for no other purpose other than just attention to detail. Some degree of useless uniformity. All right, so get my rubber dressed in. I'm also going to attempt trying to uh, leave a little bit of a flare on the bottom too. And get the two ends at the same height profile. And that looks pretty good. And then of course the next step I have, it's not exactly on zero. There we go. That's pretty close to zero. The white mark is zero, the yellow mark is 10. I'm gonna leave the uh, inside. Uh, I may get caught up in how to repress these together. I may be doing something backwards, but I'm gonna get set up on the press. I may have this whole setup here where the rubber is dressed high or low, backwards. Let me think here. So that's the ring. The ring is going down on the hub. I'm comparing this one. So my hub's that way. That's a sharp edge. So if I go this way that's correct that puts the snorkel up that's a sharp edge this goes down that's rounded this is probably how I have to do this I have to press the ring down on the hub Yeah, because that's rounded. I'll add lubrication to the inside of the ring here. And I have to get it clocked as well. I'm just checking things out. So let me uh, get set up here. Adding a little bit of lube here to everything. This is the snorkel side, and this is the rounded side of the metal. Using Vaseline. Petroleum jelly. That's what it is. I've got quite a bit on this rubber already. All right, let me try to get it clocked. So my rubber gap I've already set up to be zero, so that gives me a quick visual. And then I've got this marked with where zero is. We talked about how to clock this in the previous video. One of your flanges will be different. You'll have a foundry stamp. Go to previous video and you'll see there'll be a foundry mark and that's the one that you clock and you want this the center line of this mounting hole to be at one degree before top dead center for some reason the reason why I say that's because I compared four harmonic balancers and all four are the same all right that's all I know I don't know why I just know one degree seems to be consistent with all of them. So, 
it is what it is. Now, I've got to put this and that away. And that's my... I want to line that mark up with... Just kind of guide it towards zero, but I want to dial it to one degree if I can guess it. So I'm going to do some partial press work by hand and try to get this thing started. Blocks of wood. Yeah, I might be able to do this a little bit, get her started with a couple of hammer thwacks. Hammer curth wax. Just get her. Get something going here. And then I want to observe my. Uh, my mark right here. And make sure that I'm just a hair before zero. So let me get working on that and I'll come right back to you. So just so you know, what I'm doing is I've made myself a little bit of a rig here to where I've got this bent perfectly at a 90 degree angle. And I am uh, aligning the center line of these two holes here visually. And your perspective may differ from what I'm seeing. But just understand, I'm looking at it from a different view. And I'm lining that up. And it looks like I'm pretty dead on to be about a half a, about one degree after top dead center. Looking at the white mark in relationship to the straight edge. I'm going to go with this as my... Um, baseline for moving forward with pressing. Ah! Dang you. Good thing it didn't come apart. Okay. Hang tight. We'll get the press set up. Something appears real crooked here, but I'm going to just work with it anyway and see what I come up with. I'll see what I can send at least. I'll have to mess with it a bunch. Reset. Yeah, it's going in crooked. I'll have to dink with it again. Let me reset my chain up. Okay, that looks a little bit better. A little bit better. A little bit better. Where'd my uh, thing go? Dang it. Get my block of wood underneath there proper. All right, we're all clear. I'm not worried about pressing it exactly flush. I'll fine tune that later. Huh, this is nice. Boy, there's a significant amount of pressure. <sighs> you can hear, hear how much pressure is in there. 
I'm a little crooked on this side. Dang it. I have to back off a little. It looks perfect from this side, but on the other side, it's sideways. On the, let's call you the X, I'm on the Y axis. The Y axis is kicked over to the left. See if I can correct this. Get its trajectory back on track. Going straight in. Yes. Well, we're at the waiting game again. I believe I need to recenter that again. The jack. Moving right along again. Sheesh, get my cylinder centered up. <laughs> yeah, I need a press. <laughs> bottoming out over here. I hate that. <sighs> Gotta keep your eye on everything. <clears throat> I'm hitting bottom. I gotta rotate these blocks. 180. I should have already had those in the right spot. But you'll notice my um, trajectory of this line and zero. This line is slightly offset that way. That's what I'm after. So that's what I'm going to be checking now. And then I'll have to rotate these blocks to put the long edge up. Because my snorkel right here. Can you see that? Hmm. My snorkel right here is hitting the floor. All right, hang tight. Get you over here for my view. All right. What I've got is excess chain on the floor. It's just one continuous chain where I did a loop, shoved it under, brought the loop up to here. And then took the other end, fed it around. I've got it locked in with a screwdriver here. It's just trapping the jack. Let's see if we can send it some more.
still not perfectly straight up and down, but it's close. Get you zoomed in on the uh, timing box there and the pressing action. I hope this goes. seeing kind of like this it might be all right damn wooden chain is talking to me give it a little at a time but i'm not too far away from being fairly flush Let's see if we can zoom you in on that action there What I'm trying to do is focus on this leading edge is flush with down here. Once I get there, I can probably trim off the excess rubber and then C-clamp it back into a form fit where it's on the same plane. The, 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 the hub and the inertia ring they're both on the same plane and at the same level. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. I got something a little crooked going on here. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's the far side. I might have to tweak things again because it's not a perfect press. Hang tight. So I'm bouncing back and forth trying to get this thing re-centered because it's off a wee bit on my right hand side or your far side that you can't see. Still a little high back here. crooked as shit <clears throat> that's starting to straighten out a little bit let me get this dangerous looking thing straightened out a little bit get rid of the caddy wumpus reset this thing up again or I could just cross my fingers and hope for the best
Hmm. It's going. All right, I'm going to let it sit. Let it have a sit and relax for a minute while I pause you guys. Let's try, let's try to make some more progress. Mm -hmm. Okay, God of mercy. hung up over here. Gracious, there's a lot of pressure. But that rubber is hanging in. It's doing good. Let me take you over here and take a look. You see the rubber on the underside is flaring. I don't know what the condition is until we check it in a minute. This could be another fail video. I don't know. She'll see. So that's what we need to look like. almost flush. We're straight up and down on me facing it, but we look a little crooked from your viewpoint. I don't know exactly what to do about that. Let me finish sending it. We're just thousands away from being there. Not too far at all. We're right here. I'm gonna let it relax, let it sit. Zoom back a little. See what happens. All right, so I've let it settle for a while, keeping all that pressure on the inner hub. It looks like I've gotten leveled out. Where um, I'm satisfied to take the jack out of the game now. Let's see what we can let's see what we came up with. Hmm. I'm glad to get rid of this stuff. This is the moment of truth, like yeah. Mr. 
truck, some Harbor Freight, whatever ton bottle jack this is. Four times. Who remembers Central Hydraulics? I don't even know if they still do these or not. The Harbor Freight. It's kind of unique because Unistrap slips right on top of this piece and gives you a way to. I mean, that's useful for something. Oh, I'm almost not wanting to look. Let's see what happens to the bottom side of this. And a little crooked. I'll have to do some adjustments. Whatever the hell I gotta figure out to do that. But what I'm after is am I ripped anywhere? <laughs> Did it destroy itself? Hmm. <laughs> We're on the way to a winner. Look at that gap right there. And I'm just a little bit. Yeah. I'll have to see if I can even adjust this mark with some creative means. Let's. Uh, let me keep working on this. What I'm going to do now is trim the rubber off and let's have a look at what our what our results are because I'm not ripped anywhere. It fits. I got it on there. Nothing's torn up that I can see. Alright. We get to cutting. Let's trim some of that off. Looks like I'm a little bit too far. Not exactly perfectly even, but I got a plan for that. Let me trim the back side off and see what I come up with.
I'm getting there. Hang tight. Just about done here. Now, in order to get it just perfect, I'm going to have to get that press out again. I'm going to have to press the inner hub on the blocks. Ah. Got to get this uh I can't do that. I need metal right here. I need to bring a couple pieces of angle iron right here. Because if the angle iron is touching the inner hub, because that wood is going to give. And press the outer ring down and see what I can scrap up. So actually all I need is just a couple of metal plates with copper bars here. If you can uh, get the idea of what I'm after. You can see I'm high. Press the ring down now. Hmm. Just press the ring down. So the opposite is. Let me think about this. So I discovered if I just run it through the vise a few times. <laughs> and massage it. I can get you guys set up. I can just get this tweaked in. Looks like it's going to work out just fine. All I got to do is just do this. A little bit at a time. And just keep going around. Find that sweet spot. Yep. Nah, I don't know. Yeah. Seems right. Yeah, that's working. That is doing it. Let me work on this some more. Okay, guys. So, so far, this is what I've got. I'm using a light in the background to show you On my two flanges, the plane of the inner hub and the plane of the uh, inertia ring, and the methodology I'm going to use to find out am I dialed in exactly 
dead on. And I'm going to... Uh, find a spot that looks more obvious. Okay, so let me go 180. There we go. So you see the gap on the right hand side? And the gap on the left hand side, it, it, it only looks crazy thick and big because there's a bright light in the background. But this is a method you can use to balance it out. And all I have to do is take some fine adjustments here with dead blows and a combination of the vise and a C-clamp and I'll get it squared. Basically, I'm trying to square up this inertia ring to the face of the hub. But that's going to very, be very little effort. But that's what we got. Right there. There's my gap. Do a this and it's not exactly perfect it's like two or three thousandths off I'm gonna make it perfect because I believe I just repaired it and it's a good backup for one day in the future alright guys that's the end of this part two success Thanks. Have a great day. See you. Bye.